Do you know what it's like to work your entire life for one opportunity? An opportunity to achieve your childhood dream. Every day our athletes wake up, they chase that dream, and every day they get one step closer. Until one day, it's for all the marbles. This is Pro Day. Pro Day isn't just about chasing your dream. You also get to watch your brothers chase theirs. At the end of the day, we leaned on each other. We all knew that we were all trying to reach the same goals, so we all pushed each other, so I think that atmosphere was fun. I think Pro Day was really cool. Um, I had a lot of fun um, just being with those guys, and for me, it was kind of just to go out there and be there with my guys and just have fun with it, and um, you know, I think that's what we definitely did is, you know, we went out there, we had a blast. Um, you know, just being with each other, getting to play football and throw it around a little bit for the last time was really cool. You work your whole life for this moment and, you know, leading up to it, there's a lot of nerves and everything going on, but once you just fall back and, you know, decide to enjoy the day and really, you know, relish on the opportunity that you get, the, the honor that it is to work, uh, to play football, to earn this opportunity for Pro Day you know, you start to really be able to fall back and get into the zone and just, you know, enjoy everything going on, enjoy that, that last moment of working with your teammates and seeing your teammates work who you've been seeing this whole time. I looked at it like, okay, this is a game, you know, and let, let me do my game routine and not try to switch anything up and work well. Practicing for this one day for, you know, two to three months, I mean, it felt great, you know, to actually accomplish those goals after working, you know, for that long period of time. Going into that night, I think I was kind of nervous, just kind of waiting those three months for that one day to come. But once I got around my teammates, I felt like it was game day again. The highlight of any pre-draft workout is a 40-yard dash, but there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. You want to find the, the happy balance between actually working your position work and doing what you're supposed to do position wise and, you know, earning your shot position wise and making sure the technique's all there. But also, especially for uh, offensive linemen, you, you're kind of really just learning how to properly run. So the thing with the Ford is very technical. So uh, we first started off training, we started off with our stance. We worked on stances. And all about the stances is about angles, the right shin angles, the right. Um, how, how do your hips, where your, where your arms at, where your feet at. So kind of the first couple of weeks you're trying to just get comfortable being uncomfortable in a, in a good track stance because it is a track type of position. Just a bunch of little small things that, are, that you're working to shave tenths of seconds off of your time. Arm swings, when to pick up your head and when to duck your head, making sure your pelvis is you know kind of tucked in in a proper position so you're not running too forward because when you run too forward you put your hamstrings in, in jeopardy. So the draft process is a completely different training than what you've done in the spring ball, summer workouts, the amount of steps, the type of movements that you're doing. You go off to these places for three months and you try to train your body to get accumulated to what you're going to do on your pro day. And you only get one pro day and after that you, you get to go back to doing your regular football prep and the game becomes the game again. But for those three months it's, it's about keening in on the, uh, the key things to, to, to make sure you look good in the drill and trusting your training, trusting the, the people that you chose to train with, trust that they know what they're doing too. Pro Day is all about the numbers, but back at Yeoman, the only number that offensive coordinator Joe Craddock is worried about is on the scoreboard. Quick it on one, ready? Let's go, take the throw! Nice and easy here, Mario. Good, there it is, good ride, good eyes. Good, set the hook now, set the hook. Reload it, hey, why are you so tight? Yeah, get him fixed, let's go. Reload it, reload it, reload it. Who are you, who are you? Say who you are, say who you are. Come on, click, 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 click. Ladder, guys, right here. This is your aiming point, right here. This angle, get one more. Get it to him wide and deep now, wide and deep. Go, there it is, good. 
Hit him in the nose, elbow up, don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. See our dancing moves here, here we go. We gotta loosen them hips up, man. They gotta have a honky talking cartridge, right? Coach Craddock does a heck of a job. He's a player's coach, that's what I love about him. Hey, show me something now. Sure. Well, let's go get it, come yeah. let's go. And I always tell him, you know, I was an old, old lineman. It's, uh, he's like my quarterback, you know. Joe and I, uh, kind of fun, never had worked together. Um, until I got the job at Troy. Uh, Joe was the offensive coordinator in Arkansas. I was coaching at Ole Miss, and we played against him because we were both in the SEC West. And then I went to Kentucky. Uh, we coached against each other, and he was still at Arkansas as a crossover game in the SEC. I like to remind Joe I'm, I've never lost to him where he's 0-2 when he's coached against me. Let's go, reload it, let's go, reload it. We're gonna kick him deep today? Yes, sir. All right, I hear you. Is that you kicking field goals all day? You don't take it? Oh, you're punting? I didn't, I didn't want to see those periods. Are you doing any good? Uh, no, I did not. That's okay. We're not going to punt anyway. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to punt anyway. Get it! Yes, sir! Let's go! Let's go! That was fun. I start my high school career going to Clemson. Uh, I feel like I really got a PhD in the spread system, so to speak. I'm all about winning games. I'm, I'm not. I'm not a big stats guy. Uh, one of the guys we had at Clemson he used to always remind us that stats are for losers. Uh, it's all about winning. Talking about identity from the, of the offense, I want to see a hard-nosed mentality. Uh, you know, when people play us, I want them to feel us at the end of the game. We've had a couple situations in, in spring already where guys have run out of bounds. Like that's not us. That's not what we're about. See, we're looking for explosive plays. We're looking for good situational football. Third down, red zone. Um, but it's all got to be built with a physical mentality. Uh, and that has to start up front, that has to start in the tight end room, that has to start uh, with the receivers blocking the perimeter, that has to start with how we run the football at running back and quarterback. Every play is an opportunity for us to uh, wear you down, hit you, beat your body up, so that in the, in the second half, we're just going to take over and beat you and there ain't nothing you can do about it. So there's been a huge uptick. You've seen a little bit more. I think we've still got a long way to go in that, to be honest with you. I want to see a gritty football team, just nasty, play in, play out, um, play into the echo of the whistle. We've got some good receivers that are doing some really good things. And, and you know, a lot of times those guys are just credited with stuff that they do in a pass game. I really think those guys are really picking it up during this spring this spring session of blocking also, you know. Attitude, toughness, discipline, and love that's been set by Coach Sumrall. And, and that toughness, man, a lot goes into that. And, um, you know, we've, we've got to keep, continue to build on that, in my opinion, for the rest of the spring. Each day, we're, you know, it starts with our players. You know, we talk about what these guys can do. And uh, we try to push that envelope each day. And that's kind of the mission of this spring, is seeing what these guys can do. And then we'll throw them a bone here and there, you know. The, they, they get something out of it when they go through some challenges. We had the first meeting together. He told us, uh, all the receivers, he even told everybody, he said, uh, when people pay for our tickets, I don't want them to pay for half the ticket. I want them to standing up most of the time because we're going deep, you know. And I feel like that's a testament to that, him, his courage, and then like his trust with us. We've got a lot of talent here, man. Like that's the thing I'd say is we got a lot of talent. Um, but the most talented teams don't always win, you know, it's the best teams, you know, so we've got to eliminate a little bit of the me mentality and, and, the, and bring more of the team mentality. I really like what we got at running back, I really do. Um, Arnold Barnes has really come on. I mean, obviously everybody knows Makai, uh, but Arnold Barnes has really come on and been a, and been a bright spot in my mind. I've uh, been very excited about him. I think we got you know some guys that can make plays and guys that we're going to try to get the ball to and can and can win his football games. And there's some guys that have shown glimpses, but they're not being consistent at it, and that's where we got to just continue to uh, push those guys, coach those guys, and um, keep giving them opportunities to make plays and see who's going to be able be able to make a play for us in the season. I believe this offense is going to be a movie. You know when uh, when you purchase your ticket, you know to, to come into Yeoman and watch us play. The best believe we're going. to we're going to put it on the stage. It's going to be some pro style elements, some college spread elements. You'll see the tempos change. Sometimes we'll play with a tempo play or pace or speed. Sometimes we'll slow it down. And then we're going to make sure we, we take what the defense gives us. You know, I'm defensive background uh, in my pedigree. And I try to make sure the offensive staff and the players understand 
it's there's a weakness to every defense. After the first conversation I ever had with John Summerall, I looked at my wife and I said, that's the defensive version of me. I said that, you can ask her. Um, I just love the things he said on, on the phone uh, that just reminded me of my philosophy. Kind of a perfect marriage between me and him in terms of like being on the same page, physicality, hard nose, gritty, tough players, man. Like that's just what wins football games. It's not, it's not a secret sauce. That's what wins. When you when you got a group of guys that, that you're willing to go to war with, there's nothing better as a coach than feeling that, in my opinion. While the fans will have to wait a few more months to truly meet the hard-nosed, high-flying two-lane offense, first-year head coach John Summerall hasn't missed an opportunity to reintroduce himself to the Crescent City. Our family cannot wait to connect and engage with the campus community, uptown, the city of New Orleans, and the state of Louisiana. Thank you for being here. Excited to be here. Excited to see y'all in Yeoman Stadium in the fall. Can't wait to be a part of this community, this campus, and be connected and engaged. Fired up to be here. Can't wait to get to know y'all better. We're going to win a bunch of games. Go away. Yeah, the old adage, if you love New Orleans, it'll love you back. Well, we loved it enough that we came back. It's what drew us back is this is a tremendous place to be. Uptown, the city of New Orleans, state of Louisiana. Man, we love it. Our family loves it. I've said it a lot, but if you can't have fun here, I don't know if you can have fun. Pelicans game with my wife and my, my oldest two kids, our twins, was an absolute blast. I think they think every time you go to a Pelicans game now you should get to go on the court before the game, but I got to take my son to the Saints-Falcons game, the last regular season game this past year, which was a thrill. And then Mardi Gras. We're here, man. Everybody that asked me where you are, I said he quit. I said he quit already. I ain't quit. I, I, I ain't hell. scared, guys. Don't worry, bro. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. We're going to win it. That's right, man. And then two lane sporting events, you know, been to men's basketball, women's basketball, a lot of baseball. I told you he was going to break it. <laughs> so uh, our family, uh, we, we love being invested in the community, the university, and getting to experience everything this great city has to offer uh, has been a real thrill and a treat for our family. People come to New Orleans to do um, fun things and to be a part of the festivities. Hogs was a great uh, event. We had some friends from out of town, in town visiting. It was fun to be a part of the group that got to judge the wings. It's a hard life. Somebody's got to be us. And see a lot of familiar faces. You know, we, we hung out there for a while after, and um, so many people that we've gotten to know in our time back, and a few people we knew from our time here before that we were able to reconnect with. We ended up probably staying later than we planned, but we had a great time, a uh, tremendous event for a good cause, a whole lot of fun to be had at Hawks for the cause for sure. Who smoked the best wings isn't the only decision that coach will have to make this offseason. The olive and blue need a starting quarterback, and the three contenders are certainly not making that decision easy. Yeah, I think coming into spring practice, most people probably thought uh, Kai Horton, Ty Thompson, and both really good players. But there's a third guy in the room in Darian Mensa who I'm excited about as well. All three of these guys, there's not a talent issue. Like, I can sit here and talk about talent. Um, there's not really anything that any one of those guys need to improve talent-wise. They've got it. My name's Kai Horton, redshirt junior, and I'm from Carthage, Texas. You know, Kai has one of the most talented arms I've ever been around. You know, I've been around some really good players. He can run, he can make a play with his feet when he needs to. But the thing that stands out really about Kai is the fact that, man, he's got an NFL arm. He really does. Kai spins the ball really well. He's a, he's a good, very good, talented, natural thrower of the football. Um, he does a good job with all that, and he's smart. You can tell he's been in college football for a couple of years. It's just extremely um, savvy, you know, at the line of scrimmage, checking protections, seeing the coverage, knowing where the ball has to go each and every play. Kai's really good at that. Really building the trust 
between me and the other players on the team. Because at the end of the day, that's really what it's all about is when something goes wrong on the field, I know that those guys are going to look at me and trust in me that I'm going to be able to get the job done and they have nothing to worry about. Ty Thompson, I'm a redshirt junior and I'm from Gilbert, Arizona. Ty Thompson has got a big arm. He's got tremendous athletic traits. He's a really good runner, a great athlete. I'd say his arm strength, um, second to none. He's probably got the strongest arm on the team. He just pushes me and Darren to be better because he's a great football player as well. And like I said before, like it's good seeing that not only Darian is committed, but Ty is committed to helping this program achieve more and get better because every single day I know that like myself, like I can't take any days off. This motivation that I have right now to keep pushing myself and, and be as successful as I can is, is unmatched right now. So I'm excited about this feeling because I, I haven't felt it before. Um, and I'm excited to be a part of this team and, and kind of pour that into these guys. So, but I think that motivation is going to be something that kind of puts me over the top. Darian Mensa, redshirt freshman, now from uh, San Luis Obispo, California. Hey, where is this? All y'all ready? Darian uh, does, does not play like a true freshman at redshirt last year, a redshirt freshman to be this fall. Darian's got a little bit of California cool in him. What I like about Darian is he's just an all around solid football player. In other words, he is, you know, you can call it dual threat if you want. He can run, he can throw. He's got a chance to be uh, pretty special in my mind. Coach Craddock instills a lot of confidence in me, and he always talks about bringing your identity to the game and don't let it take it from you. And so I just come in with that mindset every practice and, you know, just coming in like acting like I'm the starter and, you know, coming with that kind of confidence to, you know, hopefully one day be the starter. I mean, to say he's a young guy, last year was his first year, he's got some, some just natural leadership ability that, you know, some people just aren't blessed with. Um, he's out there leading guys and, and taking charge of the offense like, you know, no real red ever redshirt freshman, true sophomore, um, second year guy really does. He's just committed to football. His focus is on football. His focus is on getting better. And that's just like what really sticks out to me about him. And that's what I like really respect about him. You know, there's only two people in this whole program that somebody's gonna put on the billboards. Coach Summerall and the starting quarterback. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, they have to do everything right. Everybody's always looking at those guys. And you have to be a guy to play this position. You have to be a guy that everybody wants to follow. Uh, when, when our back's against the wall and it's them coming to fight us, who's gonna lead us every day? Make no mistake, every spot on the field needs to be earned. In big time college football, the stakes are always high, and today they get even higher. It's time for scrimmage one. Well, Green Judge has got a tackle today, eh? Hey. Turn it up. You scared, get a dog, girl. Oh, yeah! Yeah! has got to be in an all time high, all the time. Not just right now. Not just when you go make a good play. Oh, oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Twice. That's a good break. Atta, baby. Keep your leverage. Good. There you go. Something good happens. Don't get too high. Play the next play. All right, football's game one. Your individual battle. Play five. Seven. Good. That's everything. It's over. Oh, it's over. Don't play for who? Don't play for who? Compete with each other. Have fun. Iron sharpens iron, man. Today, everybody gets better today. My God. Yes, sir. Bring it in here. Go. Watch the clock. A scrimmage never really starts until someone makes the first big play. We were just in a man play. I was one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Um, it was a single receiver, so I knew I was hot. and. Um, I just trusted my technique. He tried to run a double move on me, but I sat on it. Um, and while I saw the ball in the air, I was able to flip my head around and then make the play, I guess. As soon as we hit the field, I feel like we each got each other, no matter what it is. Like, it's a, it's a bond that we have that's special. Someone makes a play, we're all excited, we're all happy for that guy. And it's like he's making that play that's making the defense better. We don't worry about the labels behind the people's names. I feel like we let people go out there and play ball. So Rishi, Rishi showed that he's 
he's that guy. He could go out there and make plays no matter if he's a walk-on or not. I feel like every time I'm out there, I have a chip on my shoulder. I have to prove something to everybody here because um, that's just how it's always been, for me at least. I know I can keep up with these boys. Like, I don't really care that I'm a walk-on. Like, I go out there and play. Like, I don't look at stats, who's the biggest, who's the strongest, where they come from. Like, it's just ball out there. It doesn't matter where you come from or how you got here. Anyone can make a play. We finally are getting the chance to step up and get some experience in game. And I feel like our talents are showing. Like Kevin, Kevin's out there making plays. He's in our grade. People like Josh Moore at safety, me at linebacker, a few of the other guys at linebacker in my class. We all are getting some experience in our position finally that we didn't get to see as much last season. And this being our first spring, I feel like this, this new team is coming together. You didn't think it was going to be all defense all the time, did you? When the offense needed a big play, Reggie Brown answered the call. On the furthest one, I said the furthest one, it was just all about timing. I had a specific job to really just stay down on the D-tackle's hip and slip through behind the linebackers. It was just perfect timing, and I was just there. Honestly, that's how the play was set up. Just being confident in myself, honestly. You know, just, uh, I know what I've worked for, you know. And, you know, I, I know the time and, uh, you know, the preparation I've been putting forth and, you know, just going to everything and, like, changing my body, my eating habits and everything. So, you know, when, uh, when the moment comes, you know, I'm always ready. Great read and run by Duda right there to, you know, put us in the end zone. You also have a quarterback that freaking gives the ball off and is going to, and, and going downfield and making a block. You know, that, that type of accountability and, and selflessness amongst all 11 is what's going to allow us to be a really good offense. Uh, you know, I repped that during practice a couple of times, so, you know, that was always my second guess to go to. But, you know, my natural instinct was, you know, just cut back, get vertical, uh, find the end zone. I bring the explosiveness and my carries on, you know, when I get the ball. But, uh, you know, having that long run, you know, just showing what I'm going to bring for this season coming up. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, Coach Brock Hayes does a phenomenal job with those running backs. The next phase of that is the willingness to learn. You know, all those backs are up here, they're learning. They're grinding out the extra, the additional pieces to what happens post-snap. You know, how does the front adjust? Where is this run fit happening? Am I making my cut at the line of scrimmage? Everybody in the room is competitive. You know, they all good and have a, a great foundation, a great skill set that can, you know, work up to the next level. I got in the uh, portal after the third game, middle of the season, uh, early last season, you know, kind of tough. Long road, long battle, honestly. And, um, after the season, I was able to talk to Coach Summerall, a new staff, that feeling of joy of wanting to be here, wanting to be back, you know, and them wanting me back. So I feel like that was a great part of it, and wanting to be on the team, like be with my guys, like the people I started with, and I wanted to end it with them. So I was given the opportunity, and I took it, and I feel like I ran with it. The touchdown play, it kind of, it went really well as planned, honestly. Defense came off on the opposite side, honestly, uh, went for a pick route, but, they lost me in the mix in the middle of the field, so I was able to get open. And uh, Darian saw me backside, able to hit me in the red zone and get in there. It was really like a relief, honestly, coming back. It was really like a joy, you know, prideful, honestly, to be happy, to be a part of a team. In a team setting, you know, I feel like we all needed, not just me, I feel like we all needed that, you know, to show like what we are capable of making plays at different days, you know. And, um, Having that chemistry with those guys and then being able to, this offseason really been about gaining that chemistry. It's a new team, new staff, so I feel like that was just like an obstacle that we overcame together and we needed it. Football is truly a family affair. When a coach takes a job, their entire family takes it with them. Being a coach is a family calling, it's a life calling, it's not really a job, it's more of a, a profession. Your family does life with the team. And I'm gonna tell you right now, there's nothing like, you know, on Saturday scrimmage walking off and seeing your wife and kids and, and everybody else's families around. What's up, man? What's up, man? Remember me? Nice to meet you, Dad. I'm Eric. Our players, we consider them family. We talk about family a lot. We break on family. Family on two. One, two, family. I want 
our staff and their families around the building, around our players, also want our players in, in our coaches' homes. And I think it's good for our players to see that. I think, you know, us taking our players out to eat with our families, it gets to show them the type of men we want them to grow into be and the type of fathers that we want them to be. And I, and I use the term a lot, we do life together. You know, we're uh, not just doing football together, we're doing life together. And I think as a coach, one of the things you want to make sure you do is you build the men that you're pouring into for the rest of their lives, not just for a season, but you're trying to help them grow um, for their future, for their whole life. We are who we are and we are a family. And uh, so we got to stick up for each other. And that starts at the top with also the support of Jenny because, you know, I, I can't tell my wife really what's going on. I, I'm trying to think about what we're running on third and one. We love having our families around and our kids love it. Um, I found that the players really enjoy it and appreciate it. Well, the highlight of my son's Saturday last week was throwing with Mario Williams after practice. It's important for them to know that they have family right here at Tulane, uh, here in New Orleans, um, that they can call their family, whether it be their position coach or coordinator or myself as the head coach. <laughs> I definitely don't. I'm a state champion wrestler in high school, I definitely don't want that. Over the spring break, I was watching a lot of Jinxie, a lot of Sketch, um, and I got, got into Rainbow, hit Platt recently, going for Diamond this season. Um, so, y'all want to get on that PS5 Rainbow grind, hit me. I'm, I'm, I'm almost Emerald now, so get on that. I mean, I guess like something that people may not know about me is, um, I mean, I can make like a frog noise with like my throat. I feel like it's something not a lot of people can do. But uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>